Hello and welcome. You are watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church located in Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. We pray that you would have an open mind and ears to hear what God would say to you today. So let's dive right in to one of Pastor Scott's or Pastor Michelle's previous teachings taught at Forgiven Church. Enjoy. Go ahead and grab your Bibles. Hold them up high. Repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. And I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am. Set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do. Then I will see that it is reality. All right. High five them on the way down. Tell them they all looking good. It's good to see you all here. Y'all look better after praise and worship. Because some of you come in looking gloomy, looking like life's got you. But it's nice when you get into God's presence. Things are always better when they get in God's presence, amen? As long as you went here, and that is. I mean, God, God can be here and you can check out and totally miss out. And uh, anyhow, so uh, for those of you that have uh, been here over the last couple of weeks, you know that we've been talking about this year. Uh, my wife and I, we had a good time tag teaming uh, the first message this year, uh, talking about how we're supposed to be living in victory from the victory that Jesus has already won from us. Amen. And so many people in the body of Christ, they are living a defeated Christian life. And it's not because of what Jesus has done. It's because they're living in and of themselves. They're trying to do it in themselves. And how many of you guys know if you keep trying to do it within yourself, you're eventually going to come to your end? Yeah. Right? You can only do so much within yourself. But what the Bible says, I can do what? All things through who? Christ who gives us strength. Amen? And that's talking about winning in relationships, winning over sin. How many of you guys know we've been set free from the power of sin? Amen. Right? But why are so many people still sinning? We'll talk about that later. Not today, but we'll get into that. Because uh, cause what I'm doing is I'm setting you up. Just so you know. I'm setting you up. Because how many of you guys like learning about victory? Amen. I, I love learning about victory. I love learning about the victory I got. So when we talk about why people are defeated or some of the things that they're going through, this ought to give you an idea. Say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I shouldn't be losing in this, this area. I should be winning in this area, amen? But uh, that's all part of renewing the mind, right? We all need to renew our minds, right? It didn't say to remove them. It said to renew them. Right. Now, it would be nice if we could renew, remove them and put a brand new one in there, but that's the process we're going through, right? We're, we're, we're washing our, our minds, getting rid of the stinking thinking, right? Washing with the Word of God. Amen. That's what we're doing, right? Yes. So it is true when people say that we brainwash people down here. It is true. I agree with that confession in Jesus' name. We do brainwash people down here at Forgiven Church. We wash it with the word. Amen. All right, look with me over to Revelation again. Revelation chapter 2. Pastor, we've already gone over these the past couple of weeks. Yeah, you living in total victory of your life? Well, no, I'm not. Then shut up. All right. <clears throat> well, that wasn't too real, was it? All right. I'm just, I mean, because think about it is repetition causes revelation. And we got to get a revelation of this. Amen? Because you can, you can be quoting it all day long, but if you really not believe in it, you're going to be struggling in your life. Amen? So here we go. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. And like I say, we're going to go through what he's saying to all the different churches here. Right? And, and, he, and he's warning a lot of the churches about certain things. He's warning them of doing this and doing that. And he says, don't do this, don't do that. You need to be living like this. But then he has one ultimate theme for all of them, and that's what? Living in victory. And he says this, uh, Revelation 2, 7. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Plural. Right? It says, to the one who is what? Victorious. Victorious. I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To the next church in Smyrna, he says in verse 11, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the one who is victorious, there it is again, will not be hurt at all by the second death, right? Uh, Revelation 2.17, going to the next uh, church, it says this, Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the one who is victorious. I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Isn't that going to be nice that there's not going to be a bunch of Scots in heaven? 
kind of like now you go, John, and about half the people go, huh? There's a lot of Johns in the world. You know, I, I like it when I hear a unique name, something, something unique. But, man, it's, it's something else when you got, you know, John, this, that, whatever. But up there, you're going to have your own name. And so when he calls you out, you want to just say, me? You talking to me? <laughs> yeah, we know it'll be you, right? All right, everybody will know it'll be you, right? Well, it's on here. All right, and if you look at the next one, it says this uh, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end. Everybody say to the end. I will give authority over the nations. Remember, it's not just how you start, but it's how you what? Finish. Right? And then he says this, verse 29. Whoever say, or whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Right? Uh, chapter 3 to the next church. He says this is the church of Sardis. Verse 5. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life or erase their name. Which we've said before, your name can be what? Erased. That's why you need to finish. It's not about just saying a prayer one day and then living how you want to live the rest of your life. Right? He says, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All right? Next one in verse 12, it says this. The one who is what again? Victorious. Come on, who's what? Victorious. Victorious, right? I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Verse 13, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches and the church of Laodicea. Verse 21, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right. To sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Amen. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I would have to say he's got one major common theme. Amen. I was victor victorious. You need to be victorious. Yeah. Now, some people may not agree with me on this, okay? But that's okay. Jesus earned the name above all names yes, he did. because of what he did. Yeah. See, Jesus could have said no to the cross. Yeah. He could have said no to a lot of things. The Bible even says why he was hanging on there. He says he could have had legions of angels come and pull him off. But see, he was faithful to the end. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you guys glad that he was faithful to the end? Yeah. Right. See, he's saying the same thing about us. Just as I was faithful in my call, you too need to be faithful in your call. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's why we need to keep going to the end. Until we're done breathing in this body, yeah. until our heart's done beating, right? Until we're face to face with the Lord, we need to continue on doing what God has called us to do. Now that word victory, again, it means this. Having conquered in battle... Having overcome an enemy, it means to gain the superiority of success, triumph, to win, mastery. It means success in a struggle against an obstacle or a difficulty, and then also success in just any struggle out there. I now, that. All right, that's good. Amen. Got one. That's good. Yeah. I'm telling you, there, there's so many things that are coming against us. But how many times have we said it and we've heard it, but I think a lot of people just, let, just don't let it go. If God be for us, who could be or what could be what? Against us. And see, I think a lot of people, they go, nah, it's nice, that's sweet. No, it's real. It's real. And see, the thing about it is, is God doesn't want you struggling like you're struggling. And I know some people in here, okay, all right. I, I, almost, I almost punched my dash again this, this week. I, I apologize. I was listening to Christian radio again. <laughs> and I'm just, and I tell you, it, it frustrates me, not just because of the songs that are on there, because the songs are justifying my lack of victory in life, because I'm just human, and I'm just this, and I'm just woe is me. You know, and, and this week I was listening, and, and, and uh, you know, those super spiritual uh, host were on there and uh, they were just talking about that it's okay to lose that, that, that it's okay 
to be defeated in life and, and that it's okay to, uh, uh, well, you were with Maureen. What, what was some of the other words he was using? Yeah, yeah, having a failed marriage. He says it's okay to have a failed marriage. It's okay to have a failed this. It's okay to have a failed that. Because it's in those times that we fail that we finally learn. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? If my wife wasn't in the car with me, I'd drive it into a pole. <laughs> yeah, I just, ah! You know, I'm doing. I know you guys think I'm a weirdo, but that's okay. That just frustrates me. Because it's all the justification. Can I tell you something? You don't have to have a failed marriage. You can just learn from this and learn how to have a good one. This is an instruction manual of how we're supposed to live our lives. And you know, the thing about it is, wisdom would say, let me learn from somebody who blew it. Or somebody who's overcome it. Let me learn from them so I don't make the same mistake. Can I tell you, you know what a fool says? Let me learn on my own. Let me do it my way. Let me suffer my way. Are you kidding me? No, we love you enough to tell you A plus B equals C. One plus one equals two. I'll uh, learn my own way. Uh, And can I tell you, there's so many Christians that are like that. And then they justify their defeat. Well, God's just trying to teach me something. Well, you know what? If you do learn out of the defeat, praise the Lord, but that's not the reason. God didn't let you get defeated so you would learn something. God wants you to be victorious in how many situations? Everything. Every situation. Yeah, yeah, it's all, all everything. With all, it's all the same thing. Good. All right, anyhow. All right, go with me to Numbers chapter 13. Let's look at, at, at a very familiar passage. And as I said before, how you look at things will determine your direction. You can look at it from a point of victory before you go into something or from defeat. Are you with me on that? And so many people, they have a defeated mentality when an obstacle uh, comes against them. And that's not the way we're supposed to live our lives, right? So here we go. Uh, and if you were here last week, how many of you guys were here last week? A lot of you were here last week. Remember, we, we, saw, we saw people who, who had victory when in the natural it looked like there would be no way it could happen. I mean, I mean we, we talked about David and Goliath. In the natural, there was no way that he would have won that battle. But, but who was for him? God was for him, right? We, we took a look at another example where you had an army of 400 going against an army of 800. How many guys know that's not good odds? Two against one are not good odds. But the thing about it was the smaller army had God on their side. And they won that battle. Right? I mean, that's just the way it's supposed to be, right? So here we are uh, in uh, Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. And, and how many of you would believe this, that God wants your life to be better? Amen. Now, now, we know that that does come with struggles every now and then, right? Yeah. Do you know why the struggles come? It's not so you learn your lesson. It's so the devil gets you to quit. That's why. Opposition comes so you will quit. So you will throw in the towel. The Bible says don't cast away your confidence. Right? You need to stay strong in the faith. But so many people, when the trial comes, they quit. You can take a look at the parable of the sower, which I'm not getting in today, but the parable of the sower, right? Who's sowing the word? God's sowing the word. It gets in here, and then what ends up happening right after that? All these things start happening, right? And they come to steal the seed so it doesn't want produce in your life, right? They even show on there one of the, there's obstacles, there's trials, the cares of this world come and choke it, right? So it's not fruitful. How many of you guys know we need to be fruitful, right? God's looking for fruit, right? So here we go, Numbers chapter 13. I better get going here. Uh, you need to start my clock, please. Thank you. Just so you know, he hasn't started my clock, clock yet, so I have extra time today. All right. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, we got to get up north. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Numbers 13, beginning in verse 1, says this The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites, or God's people, from each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. Notice he didn't say just send anybody and everybody. He said you need to send leaders. 
Do you know why you got to send leaders? Because leaders have influence. Okay? But I'm here to tell you they will influence you in a good way or a negative way. That's why whatever comes from behind this, and I'm not just saying this pulpit, I'm just saying any pulpit, you better back it up with the word. You don't need a bunch of opinions and this and that. And that. You need word from here. Okay? Because there are people that will, they can take this and twist this thing. And make it, you can make this say whatever you want to say. You can take one scripture, pull it out of context. Right? You can. So it's very important that you back it up with a word. Verse uh, 25. So, so they're going to go explore the land, and they're out there. And if you jump down to verse 25, it says this. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. Verse 26. They came back to Moses and Arian and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh at the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land, right? They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. So it's good. It's positive, right? But, everybody say but. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of the Anak there. The Amalekites live there, the ne and the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, the hill country. Uh, the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Now, let me ask you a question. What was God's instruction? To go look at it because I'm doing what? I'm giving it to you. He said, go check it out. Look what I'm giving you. That's what he said. Right? So, and it says this, verse 31. But the man who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. Well, didn't God say it was good land? Yeah, yeah but look what these guys are doing. It says, they said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anna come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our eyes, and we looked the same to them. So we got two different reports, right? We got, we got two guys saying, we can do this thing. Let's go do it, because God said it's ours, right? Oh. Oh, this is the name it, claim it, blab it, grab it group. God said it, they can have it, so they believe it. Let's just put it this way. A wise person will agree with God's decree. I'll say that again for those of you who are taking notes like you're supposed to. A wise person will agree with God's decree. If God said it, that settles it. That's right. right? Now your job is to believe it. Amen. Very, very, very important. Chapter 14, it says this. That night, all, oh, oh, and by the way, by the way, uh, back there when it said, uh, it said that there was a, what kind of a report? A bad report. Just because there's a bad report, it could be true that the, the report's bad, but it doesn't mean it's the truth. Amen. Right? Yeah. If you get a bad report, that might be true. It might be true that there's some big people over there. It might be true that there's some big fortified cities. There's no sin in saying that's true. But God didn't tell you to say what's true. He told you to speak the truth, right. which is his decree. And his decree was, go and check out the land that I'm giving you, which means we can do it. Right? right? But the ones who looked in the natural said, we can't. And, uh, and if you've been around here long enough, you know that can't is a four-letter word right. with God. Because the Bible says, I can, can do all things. How many things? 
all things through who? Christ. Right, through Christ. Okay, you, that's good. Man, you, you guys are smart people. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. Now, if you were here last week, remember there's a difference between a cry and a battle cry. See, there's a lot of crying Christians. They woo-hoo and boo-hooing and, oh, woe is me. I'm just worm. I'm just this. I'm just human. We'll get saved so it'll change. Because when you get saved, you're not just human no more. You one-third God. And then we're supposed to be living by the spirit of God, not by the flesh or old nature. Right? And so there's a difference between a cry and a battle cry. But see, one thing I love about God is this, is, is if you start crying in the beginning and you start realizing who you are in God, that ought to turn into a battle cry. Amen. Because, see, God doesn't give in to the cry. He gives in to the battle cry. Because the battle cry is faith. Are, are you with me on that? Hear what I'm saying? And he says this. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Don't you love people like that? No matter, no matter what. Yeah, I was sarcastically speaking. Yeah. No matter what's going on in their life, it's always negative. We were here. It was horrible. Now we're here, and it's horrible, and it's going to be horrible tomorrow. It's always bad. Where's God when you need him? God, why have you left me? You know, for us that know the word, the Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Man, you guys had some good stinking teaching around here. Man, I, I'm telling you, you've been doing some good this week. All right. Right? But I'm just telling you, so many people, woe is me, it's always this, it's always that. Ah. For people that are like that, that come to church here, please don't tell people you go to church here. <laughs> and then do what my wife said, stop it. Stop being negative. If you're going to be negative, don't tell people you go to church here. You wonder why they don't come? Yeah. <laughs> they look at your life. Right. Oh, let's go to Forgiven Church so we can be like that. No. Wrong. No, we believe in victory here. <clears throat> Boy, I'm man, getting a little. Whew. I'm just setting you up. I'm getting ready to let you have it here in a minute. All right, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> bring it on, right? Bring it on. Bring it on. Then he says this. Uh, we're, okay, yeah, let's not fall by the sword. Here we go. Our wives and children will be taken as plunder, these so positive people. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? Yeah, let's go back into chains and slavery where we had no freedom at all. We had no say. We were under dictatorship. Come on, seriously? But you know what? There, there, are, there are Christians that are like that. Man, I tell you, I tell you. It was a lot better when I wasn't serving God. And we've all been there. We've all been. Look, if you haven't had a hard life being a Christian, I checked your Christianity. Because if your life was a whole lot easier out there, man, or wait, no. If it's, if it's so much easier being a Christian, then I would check it out. The reason why is you're going to get persecuted. It's going to be tough every now and then. But see, when you understand you got the victory, you can get through that stuff, right? But there's a lot of people, man. You know those people that went through their phase, they got saved, and they were good for about nine months? They didn't even make the whole honeymoon. They quit and went back to their old worldly ways. They went back to Egypt. And it says this. And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Oh, boy. Well, see, they had the Church of Burger King back there, too. Well, they could have it their way, right? Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of... Je How do you say that name? 
Just call him Jeb. Just call him Jeb. Yeah. Jeb. Who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes, and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. What are they decreeing? They're decreeing what God said. God said we can have it, so we can have it. But your actions have got to back it up, right? Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid. There are so many fear nots in the Bible. Fear not, 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 fear not. Right? And do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. Right? Come on. That's exciting. Man, oh, that's so exciting. I, okay, I got to see focus here. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Seriously, they're trying to give people hope. They're trying to get their attitude corrected. And these people want to take them out. You know, you know, it's like those people down at Forgiven Church. You go down to Forgiven Church, you listen to pastors, got Pastor Michelle, anybody comes down, they give you false hope. She's a church full of false hope. That's all it is. I know some of you are looking at me like I'm weird, but I'm telling you, we've heard people tell us that. You go down there, they, they don't live in the real world. Right, we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. My, my God said, all things are possible. Amen. Not a few things. Amen. I'm sorry, I might hear about a report, but I don't believe the report. I believe the report of the Lord. Yeah. False hope. Thank you. Fine, you can be a negative doubter and do without her. I don't want to be there. Man. Ooh. Oh, boy. Hey, oh boy. Help me stay focused, sweetheart. You're so beautiful, you distract me anyhow. Man. <laughs> You gotta stay over here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What was that? Oh, <laughs> he's like, work it, Pastor, work it. <laughs> All right, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. Y'all need to focus here. All right, here we go. Tyler, you messed me up. What verse are we on? All right. Verse 11. 10. All right, verse 10. That sounds good. Okay. The computer has spoken. That would be the fact, right? But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe me in spite of all the signs I have performed among them. Wow. How long will they refuse to believe? Then jump over to verse 26. Verse 26. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, how long will this wicked community grumble against me? And he's talking about his people. And he's calling them what? Wicked. Why is he calling them wicked? Because they're going against his report. They're not saying what he said. That's why. If you take a look at other, other, other translations of this, it says there was an evil report spread among the people. What was the evil report? It was going against what God told them to do. So if God tells you to do something, you ought to do it. You ought to believe it. You ought to do it his way, Right? How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling people, Israelites, right? So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. In this wilderness, your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years old or more, who was counted in the senses and, everybody say and, and who has grumbled against me. 
So there may have been a few that kept their mouth shut. But like I know when you're at home talking about the pastors, which you shouldn't do anyways. They said, you know, they, you, talk, you, talk, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to talk about leadership at all, to be honest with you. I don't care if it's your boss. I'm just being honest with you. Unless they ask your opinion, whatever. You don't want to talk about spiritual leaders. Trust me. That's really not good. Even, even if they're wrong, even if the spiritual leaders are wrong, you don't want to be talking about them. Because God hears. How, how much does God hear? He, heals, he hears everything. Whether it's in your little tent, your little house by yourself, or not. God hears it all. Right? And there are consequences for that. Because the Bible says you have whatever you say. Right? And a lot of times it will backfire on you. The thing about it is. So he says this. Not one of you will enter the land I swore to uplift are uplifted to make your home except Caleb the son of Jeb, right? And Joshua son of Nun. As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in and enjoy the land you have rejected. Wow. Notice who rejected it? It was the people. They, re re they rejected the report of the Lord. They decided to believe what was true instead of the truth. And it cost them. That's not a good place to be. Right? That's, that's not a good place to be. So do you guys see the difference between somebody who believes in victory and someone who doesn't? The outcome is totally different. See, God is interested in his decree. And his decree is he wants you to all be victorious. Amen. Well, Pastor, you don't know my situation. You don't know. You don't know what it's like. I don't need to know what it's like. He knows what it's like. Yeah. And he told you to live in victory. Amen. Yeah, but you, you just don't understand. I don't need to understand. I, I'm just being honest with you. And, and trust me, don't look at me. See, he's not full of compassion. He's me. He's the F. No. I'm just telling you, I need to love you enough to tell the truth. Sometimes you got to suck it up and move on with God. Amen. Right? That's what we tell our kids, right? Yeah. Stop it. Quit wait. Suck it up. But when it comes to adult children, <gasps> gonna, gonna go. this is pastor abuse. No, it's love. Yeah. Suck it up. You're irritating everybody. You're always negative. You wonder why nobody wants to go out with you? You're negative. If you've come to me and told me your problem 50 times, you don't need to go to my wife and tell her 50 times. And then go tell Nate 50 times. <laughs> Justin might care enough to hear you. <laughs> but seriously. You know those people? They go from person to person to person to person to person. It's just negative, 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 negative. And you wonder why their life is the way their life is. How about start talking victory? How about start talking overcoming? It might be true what's going on, but why don't you flip that around and put some positive in your life? Which would be God. Right? Psalms 118. Look over there. Psalms 118. This is good for me. Hopefully it's good for you guys. Let's talk about a little bit of victory here. Let's see what a victor sounds like, huh? Psalms 118, beginning in verse 4, it says this. Are we there? All right. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. Amen. Doesn't sound like we got very many people who fear the Lord here. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. Yes. You're getting it. Hey, we just, we just do Bible in here, right? Let those who fear the Lord say, what? His love endures forever. 
When hard pressed, and you guys been hard pressed? Yeah, every now and then, right? When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princesses. All the nations surround me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. And what's his name? His name's Jesus, right? He says, they surround me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. And his name's what? Jesus, right? It says, they swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. How'd you cut them down? In the name of the Lord. Remember, whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord, right? Because there's power in the name, right? And then he says this. Shouts of joy and victory. Well, no, I missed it. I jumped. Verse 13. Sorry, I jumped two verses. Verse 13. I was pushed back to about fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation, right? Anybody in here, the Lord's become your salvation? All right. Well, if that's the case, then shouts of joy and what? Victory. Right, right. To one who is victorious, right? Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. What would your tent be? Your house. Maybe when we all kind of come together, but preferably your house. Yeah, your life. He said shouts of joy and what? Not doubts, but shouts of joy and victory. Not down and out, and it's never going to be any better. It's never going to be no, no good stuff, right? And then he said this. Oh, where am I at? The Lord's right hand has done the mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. That to me sounds like somebody who's victorious, right? That's victory if you ask me, right? Look, look, put up another translation here. Boy, I got to get going here. Next translation says here in the New Living, let all who fear the Lord repeat his faithful love endures how long? Forever, right? Next. In my distress, I prayed to the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princesses or the government. Though hostile nations surround me, I destroyed them all with the authority of who? The Lord. Wow, that's awesome. Yes, they surrounded and attacked me, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. They swarmed around me like bees. They blazed against me like a crackling fire, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. My enemies did their best to kill me, but the Lord rescued me. Well, this is so good. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me what? Victory. victory. Yep. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. The strong right arm of the Lord is raised in triumph. The strong arm of the Lord has done glorious things. I will not die. Everybody say, I will not die. I will not die. Instead. I will live to tell what the Lord has done. That needs to be our, our shout, man. No matter what we're going through, I will live and not die. This situation will not take me out, but I will overcome this situation. And I will. Say, I will. I will, I will what? Proclaim what the Lord has done. Who did it? The Lord. If you're getting your strength, your hope, and everything from him. Amen. That's good. That's good whether you like it or not. Luke chapter 10. We'll finish over here. Luke chapter 10. Oh, man, I am just preaching myself happy. Now I get to preach this again. I am so on fire. Here we go. Luke chapter 10. Let's do some New Testament, okay? 
Would that be okay if we talk about some victory in the New Testament? Yeah. Great. That would be good for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Luke chapter 10, verse 16. Look what it says. Jesus speaking here. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with, what the, they returned with what? Joy. Joy. And didn't we just see back there that they had shouts of what? Joy. Right? It says the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority. Didn't we just talk about the authority back there in Psalms? Yeah. He says, I've given you authority in the name of the Lord, right? He says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome or have victory, right? Over how much? All the power of the enemy. Amen. Nothing will harm you. Amen. That's good. Yeah. That's New Testament. That's the truth. Yeah. He says, I've given you all authority over all the power of the enemy. And he said, how many things will hurt you? Nothing. So if something's starting to hurt you, you better step it up. That doesn't mean opposition won't come. That doesn't mean symptoms won't come. But what we need to know is no matter what comes our way, we're coming out of this thing. Right. And we're going to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Right? Look at the next translation up here. It says this. These are really good. Then he said to the disciples, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, notice it wasn't just the only 12. We're up to 72 now, right? He said, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when, he, when we use your name. Notice it's, it's his name, right? And it says this, yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Amen. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in what? Amen. You should be excited that you're a believer. Amen. Can I tell you, if you're ever feeling down and out, just remember you're going to heaven and not hell. I don't have anything to smile about. You're saved, aren't you? I mean, no matter what you're going through, hell's a lot worse. And you're not going there. Give you something to be happy about, right? Message translation says this really good. The one who listens to you listens to me. The one who rejects you rejects me. And rejecting me is the same as rejecting God who sent me. The 70 came back triumphant. Master, even the demons dance to your tune. Jesus said, I know. I saw Satan fall, a bolt of lightning out of the sky. See what I've given you? Safe passage as you walk on snakes and scorpions. That doesn't mean you do it, right? It's kind of like, you know, picking up snakes and you don't do that stuff. We're talking about if this accidentally happens and stuff, right? Okay. You don't sit there and throw yourself in a big pit with 5,000 scorpions and go stomping, right? Yeah, don't do that. That's taking it out of context, right? Talking about supernatural protection here. He says, safe passage, did you walk on snakes and scorpions? And protection from every assault of the enemy. How many of you guys know he can hit you in so many different ways? He can hit you in relationships. He can hit you physically. He can hit you financially. He can hit you emotionally. He can hit you. He can make you offended. Well, actually, he can't make you offended. You choose to be offended. Yeah, exactly. Let me clarify that. Thank you, Lord, for letting me clarify that. Right? Because remember, if all of a sudden you feel it, you need to do what? Shake it off. Shake it off. All right. Anyhow. All right. If you were here, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Did he just Taylor Swift? No, I didn't. All right, here goes. It says this. 
in protection from every assault of the enemy, no one can put a hand on you. Man, that, oh, wow. All the same, the great triumph is not in your authority over evil, but in God's authority over you and presence with you, not what you do for God, but what God does for you. That's the agenda for rejoicing kind of like what we talked about last week, man. It's a fixed fight. No matter what's coming against you, if you have the right mentality, how could you not be excited? When trials come your way, it gives you another opportunity to start shouting. Shouting the battle cry. Right? Saying, no matter what comes against me, I've got the victory. Because Jesus has already won the victory for me. Amen? Father, we magnify you, glorify you, thank you for this opportunity to once again read your word, be inspired by your word. And Lord, no matter what we are going through, that is what we need to remember. We're going through it. There is another side. And Lord, we thank you that on the other side, it is better than where we're at right now. Because God, you want to continually improve our life. The more that we are conformed into your image and likeness, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the victory that we have. Thank you that as we continually grow and be more like you, we can overcome bigger victories that will come our way. Because we know that, 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 that many times the bigger the obstacle, the bigger the reward that is on the other side. And so I thank you that we will always remember that no matter what comes against us, that you are for us. And if you are for us, we got this thing. You and me, you and one other person, we make the majority. And so this day, I choose to give you thanks and praise for the authority that comes through the believer that believes in and through you. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. All right, say it. God is good. good. All right, some of you guys got the, all right. God is good. All the time. All the time. Great. Right. See, some of you guys did. I said, say God is good, and you did. You said Pastor Scott and Michelle, thank you for watching Impact Television a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church, now in two locations, Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. Great things continue to happen at Forgiven Church, and we want to give you a special invite to attend one of our life-changing services. Whether you'll be attending church for the first time, haven't been to church in a long time, or maybe you're in transition for a new place to worship, we invite you to a place where we are not perfect, but we know that we are forgiven. For more information, you can go to our website at ForgivenOnline.org. Again, that is ForgivenOnline.org. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you at church.